This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time college All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Good morning. Golf with Jay Delsing here. I'm your host, Jay. Sitting down next to me is John Perlis. Perley, author, caddy, UCLA grad, All-American, business owner. You want to toss anything else in there while I'm making stuff up about you? Uh, fisherman and uh, yard guy. I, I'm the yard guy at my house. You're the yard guy at your house? Congratulations. When did you get that title? The day I got married. <laughs> All right, folks, we format the show like a round of golf. Uh, This first segment is called the On the Range segment. It's brought to you by the Gateway section of the PGA. Uh, Please join me in thanking the over 300 men and women across this great area that are tirelessly working to enhance our golf experience. We really appreciate them. Uh, We are also giving away each week a dozen TP5 golf balls. Send me an email, j at jdelsinggolf.com, and you'll be entered to get a dozen TP5 golf balls. And we're also thanking Bob and Kathy Donahue at Donahue Painting and Refinishing, 314-805-2132. Folks, they help make the inside, the outside of your home just beautiful. And they're wonderful human beings. Give them a call, Kathy or Bob, 314-805-2132. All right, Jen, we have a fun show today. Uh, Ryan Mansell is our gateway section spotlight he's running golf down the lake in the ozarks cool guy and we also got a little sit down with Faraday, our little irish friend pearl what'd you think of that uh give give the folks a little tease i thought it was great i really liked his perspective on uh on uh, liv on, on live and uh, well <laughs> i wish the, i wish the uh listeners could listen to what you just told me uh, on the video here you're beautiful <laughs> You're a beautiful man. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. All right, so I'm going to tell him. I'm looking at Pearlie. We're using FaceTime. Pearlie's in FEM. I'm in St. Louis, and he's starting to chirp a little bit about Faraday, and he's drinking something. He's got like a big, like a, an entire broccoli oh, floret sitting on the uh, on his front lip, and he's chirping away about golf, and I can't think about golf. He's got like a <laughs> piece of broccoli coming off of his tooth. Well, it's actually a piece of blueberry because I, I eat and drink healthy, but uh, thank you. <laughs> Technology that so I didn't go around with a black tooth the rest of my day. Yeah, no, no worries. You look like a hockey player. Anyway, yeah, so we had Faraday. It's so great. Faraday coming to St. Louis, September 28th, Meadowbrook Country Club. It's a Wednesday. He's going to have Brett Hall, Marshall Falk, the great Ozzy Smith, Chris Pronger, and newly LIV transfer Pat Perez. Should be an interesting time. Is this a traveling road show, Jay? Is that what is that what Dave does uh, throughout the country for similar causes, or is it just kind of a traveling road show in general that he just brings in different acts? I'm sure he'd consider it more like a circus, yeah. and uh, he's uh, a ringleader and also part of the. Uh, he might be kind of like the bearded lady or something like that. You know, that would uh, I'm sure how he would consider it. But, um, yeah, they, they've done a few of these events. They did one in Toronto. Uh, I think Atlanta. They're, they're, they're lighting things up in Chicago and various other places where they're grabbing local celebrities and getting a PGA Tour pro and going out and they're playing nine holes and then doing a little session on the range, a little Q&A. There's a dinner afterwards. It's, it's going to be a really fun event. I think it's awesome. Well, anyway, you were asking about what I thought about the interview. I just like listening to David Faraday, and you asked him some tough questions. I was a little uncomfortable with some of the questions because of how direct they were, how tough they were, putting him on the spot. And he just he just knocked them all out of the park. So I'm looking forward to everybody listening to what he had to say. Well, you know, Pearl, I'm a tough interview. Well, apparently not because he handled it very <laughs> Apparently not is right. Let's just jump to the PGA first, the PGA Tour first. This week is the John Deere Classic, one of my favorite uh, tournaments. Last week, great finish, heartbreaking finish for Sahit Tagala again. Double bogeying 18, a harsh lip out on his bogey putt that would have tied him. Xander Shoffley birdies 18 to take home the championship. Um, but, boy, I'll tell you what, Tagala is a name to watch. He is a stud. He played at Pepperdine. 
it's fun to watch me nearly knocked off the Phoenix Open in your neck of the woods when you uh, were vacationing out in uh, in Scottsdale Pearl. And um, that tournament in Hartford is a really fun event. They raise a boatload of money for the local charities up there. How does the gala handle the, the, the not winning the tournament? I don't want to call it a loss because it's still a huge week for him. How did he handle it emotionally? Because he really was stressed and got emotional in Phoenix when he couldn't finish it off. He's an emotional guy and an emotional player. You could see he was really upset. He drops his putter on the 18th green after watching the putt just heartbreakingly lip out. And uh, he spoke about it. You know, this is a, a dream come true for him. His parents are, are, are from India. They went to, his dad went to graduate school here in the U.S. and met his mom, who's also an Indian immigrant. You know, we talk about inclusion and we talk about a lot of these kind of hot button topics. But, you know, Pearl, this is a living, breathing, cool example of a guy who a uh, uh, first Indian American golfer playing on the tour. And he's great. No, he's fun. and it, it, It's unique. It's not that regular cookie cutter swing. There is a lot of emotion out there. He's a great big guy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know. I, I felt for him in Phoenix because he really took it hard. It, it probably just. The emotions got the best of them, you know, and probably worn out by the end of the week and stuff. So, you know, that's part of it, isn't it? You just got to knock at the door. People don't realize how many times you got to knock at the door to get comfortable. And even then, even then, coming down the stretch, you can get knocked off for one reason or another. The same thing happened in the ladies' tournament tour uh, this last week. NG Chung wins her third major championship, uh, the KMPG PGA Championship. They played it at Congressional, which is a great track, bro. I don't know if you ever played it in Washington, D.C. But, yeah, NG, NG had a huge lead after 36 holes and then shoots 75-75 coming in. And had it not been for a bulky putter, Lexi Thompson would have been ho- – uh, hoisting her, her second major championship trophy. But it was not meant to be. She had a couple of short misses, a couple of three putts on the back nine. She had a couple of opportunities for birdie uh, on eight and nine, uh, coming, closing up the front nine that she did not convert in. Lexi puts herself in a position a lot of times, John, with her power, with her length. And, you know, she's. I've been trying to get her on the show for a while. She is really interesting player out on the PGA on the LPGA tour and I'd love to get some of her thoughts she has battled some mental difficulties you know and I I know it's it has to be dealing with the heartbreak losses and some of the things last year I think she had a six-stroke lead in this event that stuff wears on you man well I like what you said about that she puts herself in that position to, to get it done we need to do that I know I've said it on the show before but one of the, the one of the greatest, if not the greatest ever, Jack Nicholas. He has as many second places as he does first places. Does that mean he choked all the times? And then if you look at all the second, third, fourths, and fifths he had, they probably double or triple the number of wins he had. You just have to be there, and all kinds of things can happen. It could be choking. You could have just got a bad bounce. It could be a combination of a bunch of those things. I'm with you though. I like to kind of judge it by who's get who's up on the top most often. You look at a uh, oh heck no. Uh, Matt Kuchar, here's a guy that's up there a ton, and sometimes he's not converting, but often it's part of that road to, to greatness. You know, Nick Foldo, before he started converting, Tom Watson was considered a complete choke till he started converting. It's part of the process, but to your point, somehow you have to be able to be strong enough to get past those monster disappointments. I'm a Midwest honk, so I'm going to go back to the PGA Tour, talk a little bit about John Deere this week in the Quad Cities area. And I got to tell you, one fantastic PGA Tour stop. This community turns out in, oh man, masses to go out and support golf. They always have. They're one of the longest standing sponsors on the PGA Tour. The economic impact that this event has on that area is tens of millions of dollars over the years. And uh, it's really fun. And Pearl, they have a pork chop sandwich that is to die for out on that golf course. You get to about the 14th hole, getting a little hungry, you run over there, get a little pork chop sandwich, take it on down. It's a, it's a lot. My, my daughters took out a lot of pork chop sandwiches and a lot of Whitey's ice cream there in the Quad Cities area. Hey, I was uh, hungry on the 14th hole caddying for you, and I didn't get offered any kind of a pork, pork chop sandwich. You must not have been having a very good day. No, I think I was chasing the ball a little to the side and a little bit to one side to the other side that day. Did you find it? 
Some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them. Did you ever caddy there? Yeah, one time. One time. Did we do maybe, well? Maybe twice, but I, I definitely caddied there. Yeah. It was it was beautiful and it was very well uh, manicured. It it did not fit my eye or I think your eye very well. When Phil Mickelson came out with his off color comments about the LIV tour. KMPG acted quickly and ended the relationship they had with Phil, which it's not whether or not they ended the relationship. It's the fact that they had values and they stood up to what they what were, was important to them. And that is important to me. And then this past week in the women's LPGA major, KMPG increased the purse to $9 million for the women. That is really awesome. So appreciate them supporting the game doubling down on their commitment to golf, to the women's game, and supporting the game and the growth in general. That's the tip of the cap. It's KMPG and their support of the game. Brought to you by Dean Team, Volkswagen of Kirkwood, 314-966-0303. Thank you, Colin. Folks, don't go anywhere. John and I will be back with more of Golf with Jay Delsing on the front nine. On the Range is presented by... The Gateway section of the PGA. Find out more at PGA.com. Folks, do you need a new car, truck, or SUV? Then the Dean Team of Kirkwood is the place for you to go. 314-966-0303 and go see Colin Byrne. He just got me into a new SUV and I love it. Boy, did they make the experience painless and super, super easy. Most dealers don't have any cars in their lots, but at Dean Team of Kirkwood, Colin has an entire parking lot full of new and used cars. You don't want a VW? That's no problem. They have Audis, BMWs, Mercedes, anything you want. Colin and the Dean team of Kirkwood will go get it if they don't have it. Call them at 314-966-0303 or go to deanteamvwkirkwood.com. The Dean team for all your car buying needs. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. For golf tips, news on the latest equipment, and everything golf. Log on to golfwithjdelsing.com. The Front Nine is coming up. I want to tell you about my friends and longtime supporters of this show, Marcone. Yes, they are incredible community stewards. Yes, they are the largest distributors of GE appliance parts in North America. What you don't know, they are spearheading, led by owner and St. Louis and Jim Sowers, a new service dog program with and in conjunction with David Faraday and the 24-7 Battle Buddy program. Jim and Mar- Marcone are ensuring that a minimum of two service dogs a year will get partnered with a veteran hero in need. These dogs are expertly trained, connected with their veteran master, and then magic starts to happen. These dogs are retrained to meet the specific needs of their warrior and to help them successfully navigate everyday life. You can learn more on Facebook at Troops First 24-7 Battle Buddies or reach out to me at j at jdelsinggolf.com and I will fill you in on more of this program. This is the PGA Spotlight on Golf with Jay Delsing. See more at PGA.com. I am sitting down this morning with Ryan Mansell. Ryan, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Jay? I'm doing great, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. So, Ryan, you're the GM at Osage National Golf Resort, as well as the regional manager for Great Life Golf. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in your world. I know you got a lot of neat things happening. We do, yeah. Um, you know, Osage National in particular uh, is really doing well. You know, golf seems like it's it's healthy, it's it's vibrant. Uh, the Lake of the Ozarks area in particular really seen a a spike in traffic, and uh, you know, the golf courses down there are, are doing well. You know, I think COVID brought a lot of people back to golf. We're seeing people come back to golf that maybe hadn't been active in it in a while. And we're, and we're seeing a lot of new people, you know, introduced to the game that are starting to play. Oh, it's just terrific. Who would have ever thought that with such a horrible situation for the rest of the world, we golfers would experience this, you know, uptick in this boom. 
Yeah, I know. No, it's been uh, kind of a, an unexpected uh, plus from from everything. Tell us a little bit about Great Life Golf. I know that's uh, keeping you busy as well. It is. Uh, it's a great company to work for. Uh, we have 22 golf courses throughout uh, primarily the Midwest. Uh, the, the nucleus of those is up in the Kansas City metropolitan area. A couple properties in Wichita, obviously one at Lake of the Ozarks. And then, you know, one of my latest projects has been working, you know, completely basically refurbishing and reopening a golf course down in Crestview, Florida, just north of Destin in the Panhandle. It's called Blackwater Golf Club. And it was a uh, a course previously called Foxwoods that was, was closed almost five years ago, completely abandoned, completely grown over clubhouse and everything. And the, uh, City of Crestview bought the property about a year and a half ago, kind of through a connection of a connection, uh, got with Great Life Golf, expressed a passion for reopening the course. We started that process essentially from scratch, you know, a redesign, new irrigation, all new turf. We opened a, uh, a really cool top tracer technology driving range on site. The range is open and functional. Uh, we've got nine holes of the golf course open and planning a grand opening for everything later this summer. So that's been a really fun project to, to see it go from abandoned to where it's at now, you know, kind of be involved from that step. I can only imagine the thrill of being able to revitalize something that seemed almost dead and completely, you know, out of it to bringing it back to life and seeing people enjoy it and get out there and play some golf. That's pretty cool. It is. And, and it's been fun because it's Crestview is a town of over 30,000 people that when that golf course closed down, uh, they didn't have a course in town. They didn't have a driving range in town so you're seeing all these people that have you know they found other outlets but they've kind of been golf starved for years and to now have that hometown course and their own backyard back has been really exciting the osage national golf resort has always been for my chair at least has always been kind of the the jewel down in in the lake it must get crazy down there yeah it's been busy already you know and we're fortunate enough to be one of uh, of a lot of great golf courses down in that area so it's a great destination to come and play golf but we certainly, uh, this is busy season, you know, we get going in mid-April with a lot of people from up north traveling down for some spring golf, and then, yeah, the lake area as a whole is is in full swing. This will be a really busy weekend coming up, and lots of morning golf, and then probably lots of people, uh, you know, finding their way out to the lake in the afternoon. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. Keep doing what you're doing. I love hearing the stories about golf courses reopening and, and the golf courses full growing the game like what you and I both love to do. I appreciate it. Yep, it's exciting. That was the PGA Spotlight on Golf with Jay Delsing. Coming up, Jay sits down with David Faraday. That's next on Golf with Jay Delsing. I am proud to welcome the gateway section of the PGA back to my show. Whether you're pulling into your favorite driving range, public golf course, or country club, there is an excellent chance that the staff there is part of the over 300 men and women PGA professionals at over 100 facilities that make up our gateway section. I grew up watching so many of these fine men and women getting to the golf course at dawn, leaving at dusk, spending their entire day running events, giving lessons, and growing this great game. PGA Reach, Drive Chip and Putt, PGA Hope, and the fantastic PGA Junior League are a few of the examples of the programs run by these same PGA professionals. Go to gatewaypga.org to learn more or to find your next PGA professional for your next lesson, go to pga.com. The Gateway PGA, growing the game we love. The Ascension Charity Classic returns September 6th through the 11th. Once again, St. Louis will host golf's greatest champions. Players like Bernard Longer, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, John Daly, and returning champion David Toms. But no matter which legend wins this year, the real winners will be North County Charities because all proceeds from the tournament stay right here in St. Louis to benefit our communities. Tickets available now at ascensioncharityclassic.com. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The Front Nine is presented by the Ascension Charity Classic, September 5th through the 11th at Norwood Hills Country Club. For tickets, ascensioncharityclassic.com. Hey, welcome back. Golf with Jay Delsing. John and I are here, and we are headed to the Front Nine that's brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic, September 5th through 11th. Don't miss out on this one, folks, and don't miss out on the Advocate PGA Tour event. 
either at Glen Echo that same week, 5th through 11th. It is going to be some seriously good golf played in St. Louis that, that week. All right, I had my interview with David Faraday, so let's go to the first half of the David Faraday interview. I'm sitting down this morning with my buddy. Gosh, that's weird for me to say buddy. Is it okay to call you a buddy, Faraday? How you doing, man? No, yeah, I'm more than a buddy, pal. You know, we almost got married at one stage. This is a family show. We can't go We can't go into that. But um, uh, hi, how you doing? Thanks for, ju- <laughs> thanks for joining me today. Yeah, sure. It's a pleasure. We've got some crazy things going on in the world of golf, I guess. You know, there was uh, an article I read, I think it was by Calvin Klein, who is the uh, clothes designer, that said any sort of publicity is good. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that, but we have got golf being talked about all over the place right now. Yeah, uh, it's an amazing time in golf. And, uh, you know, people keep telling me, you know, this is a tremendous problem. You know, we're going to have difficulty getting over this and all the rest. You know, it's kind of a nice problem to have, Jay. There's too much money out there. I, I never thought I'd see the day in golf. The the amounts that LIV is throwing around are staggering. And I just, I, I, it's hard for me to not see this as some sort of Greg Norman just wanting to stick it to the PGA Tour. I, I Maybe I'm cynical. I know I am. Well, you know, Greg has wanted to do this for the past 35 years, I want to say. It's been, uh, you know, his dream to have a global tour. He's obviously very instrumental in it. Um, there, there have been several attempts over the years. Um, and, you know, I, I, I would sort of predict that, you know, in five years' time, we will have a true global tour. You know, you, you put up this amount of money, people are going to play for it. Um, it's it's just that simple. It's, uh, you know, a career life changing opportunity uh, for a lot of these guys. You know what, but and I don't have any problem with them taking the money. It's the, the issue for me is just listening to them tap dance around it. Why don't they just say, I cannot afford to not take this? Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you know, it's, uh, it, it's obvious, you know, what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really understand that myself, you know, trying to justify it by any other means. Uh, it's just a lot of money. That's all it's, you know, people's families and for their children, for their legacy. Oh my gosh. It's legacy money for sure. And I'm waiting to kind of see Greg and these guys on the organizing end of LIV kind of to round this thing out a bit, David, to talk a little bit about how uh, are, is there going to be a charitable component to this? Because golf has always been that way. I know it's not necessary, but it's always been yes. very charitable, charitably driven. I'm also wondering, you know, what do they do if they get more than 45 guys to sign up? How do they rank them? How are they using, you know, there's a lot of holes that are are are, are need to be filled. And you know, what is your f- three look like what is you know are where are they going to play what does all that look like i i'm i'm interested in that i'm interested in it too and obviously you know it's 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 unknown at this stage but you know i mean these are problems that you know aren't really problems when you look at them from a, a perspective you know so they get too many players uh you know they're signed up they'll i guess they'll just expand the field um, I, I can't imagine them doing anything else. You know, if guys want to play and if they're, uh, I mean, they may have to come up with some kind of qualification um, eventually or, you know, to get past just the, the pure invite sort of stage that it's at at the minute. Yeah, and you also have the shotgun start that's just kind of crazy. I, <laughs> I'm not sure how that uh, how that's going to be sustainable, but I don't know. Maybe it is. You know, I, I I don't know that it'll it it won't uh, sort of evolve into something else. Um, it, it's it is difficult to see it staying like a shotgun. And, uh, you know, some of the things. It, it, I mean, it's experimental, and, and uh, you know, they're going with, with what they think works right now. You know, maybe it'll change. Do you ever foresee a time where this would kind of join hands with the PGA Tour and try to work together? I think that's a, a good idea, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the, the thought of a global tour, you know, they're talking about playing in the Far East, you know, in the, in the Middle East uh, and uh, Australia and around the world, uh, you know, for huge amounts of money. Um, you know, we've got the fall series uh, on the PGA Tour that, that very few of the players play. I mean, it, it's, it's about scheduling as much as it is anything else. You know, to try to put these events on where there isn't a, a big conflicting event. 
I, I think it'd be wonderful to see events all over the world and have them under the PGA Tour umbrella. I don't know what that would do to the, you know, the European Tour, which you uh, played for so long. I, I, I wonder if there's a way to kind of make some of the lower events on the European Tour become more Corn fairy ish and be more feeder-type tour to the World Tour. I don't know. There's a lot smarter yeah. people than I'm at, at this, but there's a lot that they could they could co- join forces and make this more unified than such a screaming match as it is right now. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. Um, but you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of a nice problem to have. Yeah. I mean, it, did you ever think that we'd possibly be having $20 million purses? I mean, what the heck I'd, I'd walk to that event to play in that thing. Absolutely. I'd crawl on my hands and knees over broken glass. <laughs> So talk to us a little bit about you got you had a thrill earlier this year in the Tiger Woods induction. First of all, just getting that call had to be fun. Oh yeah. Um I mean it was such an honor to to get to do that. And uh you know, I I've spent so much time with him on the golf course. Um I I watched him grow up really. You know, at the leading edge, you know, down on the fairway every time he was uh he was on CBS Air, I was basically with him. It was either me or Peter Costas usually me um and uh you know we just got to to develop and and you know i wouldn't call it even so much uh it it was a friendship um for, for sure but uh it, it was always kind of on a business level if you if you like i uh pe- people thought that i knew much better you know than i did it was only you know in in the later years you know that i sort of began to understand him uh as a as a person and the player you know i mean he's uh so incredibly driven and and so incredibly good jay uh, and, and that that combination you know i mean he wins a major championship by 15 shots the last person to do that was old tom morris and he was playing with the badger's testicle stuff with seagull feathers you know <laughs> at, uh, and and we're going back to his home course <laughs> just in a in a few weeks. We'll be back at St Andrews, and I expect to see him playing there. You know, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, if he gets into contention on that golf course. You know, if his body's up to it, you know. I I so I so agree in terms of walking and in terms of the demand on the walk compared to Augusta. Uh, I mean, the uh, the old course is a piece of cake compared to that. Yeah. I mean, the only thing is it might be a little hard underfoot. It depends on the weather. Um, but, uh, yeah, in terms of the walk, it's uh, it's a lot easier. Boy, it's just flat. David, when you talked about Tiger's competitiveness, I thought I was competitive, and you and I have been hanging around with a lot of type A males. I have never seen anybody like Tiger. He doesn't give up on anything. No. Nothing. No, I mean, uh, and you know that uh, he had to be uh, hurting to, to withdraw you know, from an event, I never saw him, uh, you know, give up on one shot in all the 25 years, you know, that I would been covering him. Um, I, I can't remember a shot where he just you know, didn't give it a hundred percent, which is amazing. The game's so devastating emotionally and, uh, you know, it can, it can really kick you when you're down and, and it's easy to throw in the towel. Um, but he, he never did not once in all the time that I saw him. What was your biggest takeaway from the Hall of Fame induction, getting to hang out with Tiger and just being in that environment, watching him kind of be more of a dad than we ever get to see? We never get I, to see that. Side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was incredibly impressed with uh, with the kids. Uh, you know, they have every right to be spoiled and, and uh, you know, have attitudes and all the rest. They're two of the nicest children that I ever saw. And uh, Sam, uh, the... Uh, the the little speech that she gave you know i mean uh, as old as she is you know it was just an amazing piece of maturity i think alan and tiger have done a an incredible job uh raising those two charlie is uh he's he obviously going to be a player um be interesting to see him grow up as well i watched his dad you know yeah, right. i'm looking i hope i last long enough to see charlie i know i know we gotta we gotta get him to speed up and us to slow down to make it i think i'm not sure that's right yeah. So tell me what you, uh, how, how are you feeling about the state of the game? I, and we're going to get into the fact that you're coming to St. Louis. I'm really excited about that. But 
with all of the, the stuff that we've been through, the COVID, the cancellations, all that crap, no spectators, I never realized how important spectators were to, to, to sporting events and the yeah. game of golf, even though we're outside. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, just from, from an atmosphere standpoint and, and players, you know, get energy from the crowd. Um, you know, we saw it with Keegan Bradley last week. You know, who really got into it, you know, a hometown boy in Boston, you know, played really well. Um, it, it makes a huge difference. And, you know, the lack of, of crowds was just, uh, I mean, it felt like a vacuum to me. I, I didn't realize how important it was. I, I Gosh, it was almost eerie. It was almost like a, some sort of weird sci-fi movie or something. But um, Justin Thomas had some really great comments on it saying, you know, you, you pull something off and there's nobody there to, to acknowledge it except for you and your caddy and you go to the next tee and yeah. the, the guy standing on the next tee don't even know you did it. Yeah. It's you know, it's like college golf. I mean, even college golf gets crowds these days. Yeah, it really does. I, it's just been a hell of a boon for golf. And this LIV has come at, a, at, at, at an interesting time. Do you have any trouble with the Saudis being behind the money on this? Uh, personally, I don't, you know, um, but that's one of those things. I mean, I'm not, I'm not involved in it. Um, but you know, I, I I think I could find a way around it if if I were. <laughs> I, the the amounts <laughs> are are just a, a staggering amounts. It's it's a, it's and it also, do you have any yeah. idea, David, how long they're signing for? You know, so Dustin Johnson signed f- for 125 million for how long? How long does that commit him to LIV? Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I know they're multi year contracts. These things. Um, you know, and, and there's figures tossed out. You don't know whether they're true or not. Uh, it's uh, and, and it's it's hard to get a an accurate picture. I, I I think you know we probably won't have one for a couple of years. Yeah, we definitely need some of the dust to settle. Did you have much interaction with Phil Mickelson? I know that you were always around the the uh, the leader groups, and I know that you were with Tiger for oh my gosh of of his 82 wins. I bet you you were there for probably 70 of them, 75 of them. Yeah, I mean, I I was there for a bunch of them, that's for sure. And uh, with Phil, yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time around there too. But he, as you know, Phil is he's a different cat. Um, you you just you never know really what you're going to get with Phil. And uh, boy, he's proven that recently, that's for sure. Uh, but it, it, I, I always thought he was the most interesting player out there, even sometimes more so than Tiger. You know, because of the way his mind worked. And, you know, the shot, the, the shots that he thought he could hit, you know, many of which he did, it, it was, uh, it was amazing. You know, of the 20 greatest shots I've ever seen, probably 10 of them are Tigers and five of them might be Phil's. I remember the six iron from out of the trees at, uh, at Augusta and the 13th, um, just one of the most amazing shots I've ever seen. And, and he would, he, you know, very few players would even think about doing that. You know, but he's willing to take it on and, and uh, you know, just hit an extraordinary shot. You know, David, for a guy who's pretty smart, I guess, he's really done some questionable things. And and it's interesting how this has all kind of backed back into him and 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 kind of come to roost. It's I, it's he's almost like a, a board game, like you just don't really know what he's going to do next. And then listening to his pressers yeah. at the U.S. Open, I was like, who is this guy? He's not even not even re- remotely close. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's funny. We saw the same, no, not the same. We saw a change in in Tiger. You know, after uh, you know the various incidents you know he was he went on oprah and espn and, and that kind of thing and and i mean i think it did change him um you know he he's much softer and and gentler than than he, than he used to be and I, I suspect that phil is uh you know he came up against a pretty uh tough uh wall of protest if you like and uh you know from sponsors and uh, and all the rest and, and you know with the gambling problems you know becoming public and uh, there are so many. I don't think there's been a player in the history of the game that more rumor has circulated around. Um, I, I, and you never really know what's true with Phil and what's not. You know, people ask me, oh, you know, is Phil Mickelson really a nice guy or is he not? You know, I, I, the only answer I've got is yes. Um, <laughs> exactly. I, he's always been good to me. And that's, uh, you know, I guess that's the only way you can judge him. 
Yeah, it's really, I mean, when you look at it, he's won 45 times on the PGA Tour, and with the, like you said, the mindset, we've watched him crash his car, I don't know how many times, taking on shots yeah. that he thought he could have done that you know if it would have been Tiger Woods, that ball would have been put in a different spot, put on the green, and, you know, and, and taken, taken yeah. care of business because I felt like Phil wanted to win with a certain type of flair, and I think Tiger just wanted to win. No, I think that's an accurate uh, statement. Uh, I mean, Phil, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he gave a few away by, by taking on shots that, uh, you know, he shouldn't have. But, uh, boy, you know, when he won, and uh, I, mean, I think you're right, he wanted to win with a certain flair. Yeah, and, and he sure had it. Just an amazing career, 45 wins, you know, a, a major at 50. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's a tremendous ball from grace. Um, you know, in the, in the same way that Tiger did, uh, the two of them, I mean, there are parallels there. And um, I, I suspect you're going to see a different fill uh, fr from here on in. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up the first half. But don't go anywhere. On the back nine, we'll give you the conclusion of the Faraday interview. This is Golf with Jay Delson. The Ascension Charity Classic returns September 6th through the 11th. Once again, St. Louis will host golf's greatest champions. But no matter who wins, the real winners will be local area charities and communities. Tickets available now at ascensioncharityclassic.com. Powers Insurance is a family-owned agency right here in St. Louis that specializes in providing personalized coverage for the client who has a lot going on. At Powers, they understand that you and your life do not fit in a simple box. So guess what? Neither should your insurance coverage. Go to powersinsurance.com or call 314-725-1414 and ask for Tim Davis. That's powersinsurance.com. I want to tell you about a family-owned and operated golf business that's been right here in St. Louis for over 40 years. I'm talking about Pro-Am Golf Center. That's right, Pro-Am Golf Center. I know you know the name, but I'm not sure you know what they really have to offer. They have everything a seasoned golfer like myself could need, all the way down to what a beginner would want. Pro-Am Golf Center has the lowest price in the area for custom club fitting. I just went and visited CJ. He is terrific. If you call them now, mention my name, Jay Delson, you will receive a discount on that already low club fitting price. Their number is 314-647-8054. Ask for CJ, or you can visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. One thing we all often forget to add to our checklist when traveling is where do I park at the airport? Of all the things we need to think about when traveling, parking should not be one of them. AAA's partnership with the Parking Spot offers several parking facilities at the airport with free shuttles available 24 hours a day right to your gate. And the Parking Spot shuttles will take you right back to your car when you return. Their lots are well lit and fenced in and many facilities offer premium, covered, and open-air parking. Right now, the parking spot is offering all AAA members a 30% off parking discount through August of this year. Visit theparkingspot.com and enter promo code PARK22 to get a 30% discount off your reservation. That's theparkingspot.com promo code PARK22. And remember, AAA travel is there for all your travel needs. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. To learn more about the game of golf, latest equipment, and golfing tips, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Jay and John are here, and we are headed to the back nine, which is brought to you by our friends at Pro-Am Golf. Folks, Pro-Am Golf's got so much to offer. They have great gear. They have so much to offer. But I'm staying consistent on this message. Call CJ and get fitted. Call CJ and get fitted. 314-647-8054. I think we sent, John, I think we sent five people there last week to get fitted. The price is ridiculously low. If you if you tell them that I sent you, they're going to give you half price off of a $40 fitting. It is just fantastic. Pro-Am Golf USA, you can reach out to them, but call them, email them, 
and get yourself a fitting appointment with CJ. He's the best in town. All right, folks, let's go to the conclusion of the David Faraday interview. David, you know, when you think about how much we love the game, we're around the game, the two best players in the last 25 years or so have brought more drama into golf than probably the game's ever seen, ever. No, definitely. You know, with the ups and downs and, and you know, the nature uh, of uh, social media and, and the era in which they play, um, it, it's amazing. You just, uh, you know, you, you get to know stuff about these players that, that, you know, really should be private, probably. I mean, there's a camera and a microphone everywhere. Um, and, and you just got to be so careful. It's hard to be a character. Um, it's hard to give yourself a hard time. <laughs> uh, you know, as we saw with Just, Justin Thomas, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a different, it's a different era. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's nice that we got to, to see, you know, we got, got to take the journey, I think with, with Tiger and with Phil, uh, a lot of the times, you know, it was, it was negative, but you know, there've been a lot of positive things too. And I think they went out, you know, with both of them. Overall, I think they'll both be remembered as, you know, two of the finest that ever played. Well, Tiger the best. Oh, without question. I mean, if they would have had microphones when you and I were playing nine holes together, someone would have come uh, and escorted you and I off the course before we got to number 10. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They would have had the button on. I can tell you that for sure. Anyway, hey, let's no, talk. No, I, I don't know what I'd be doing now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be something else. I can tell you that for sure. It'd be something else. We both would be. Yeah. Let's talk about the Faraday Classic. Okay, so you guys have put together yeah. this really cool fun, uh, these really cool fun events that you're doing all over North America. Well, we did two of them in Canada. Um, the idea came from uh, an event I did with Tiger, actually, down at, uh, at uh, his golf course in, in Houston. Blue Jack, yeah. Blue Jack, Blue that's Jack. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the, the official opening uh, of the golf course, you know, it was Marco Mira and Tiger. And, uh, you know, they played uh, kind of an exhibition. Uh, and uh, there were carts with speakers on them and they were lavalier mic'd. Uh, everybody was mic'd up. You know, I had a microphone and did a little commentary on the side. And then we did an interview afterwards. Uh, uh, and I'm adding, you know, to it uh, about 45 minutes of stand-up after the uh, after the golf. And in St. Louis, um, we've got uh, John Hamm, we've got Ozzy Smith, we've got uh, Chris Pronger, Pat Perez, and me. Uh, so uh, I mean, it, it's a, it's it's a great. Uh, it's a great bunch of people, and it's a lot of fun on the golf course. That we discovered in Canada, you know, the crowd can get really close because we're only we only got a thousand people uh, that we're limiting the tickets to. The crowd can get really close. There's there's no ropes, um, uh, and you know they get to you know see these guys close up and personal, and uh, you know the crap they give each other, you know, during the round is worth the price of admission alone. And having Pat Perez out there is going to be worth the the price of admission as well. There's no oh, telling what he what uh, Double P might uh, come up with. No, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean he has managed he has managed to remain a character despite social media. I don't know how he survived. He he absolutely has. I get such a kick out of it when he starts talking about his shoe collection. I'm like, oh my, who who knew? Yeah. Who knew uh, the guy's got that many shoes? Yeah, he's like a Mel Marcos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about. So, so we're coming to you're coming to St. Louis September 28th. We're going to do it at Meadowbrook Country Club, and there's so much more that goes with it. We're going to do a little nine hole exhibition. There's going to be a range session, I think, where the the guys are going to be oh, hitting Dan Beaver, yeah, hitting balls. Beaver is just worth the price of admission as well. What a ter- first of all, a terrific human being, and he is he is really funny. Yeah, and and just one of the best trick shot artists I, I've ever seen. He, he's remarkable. You it's can't a, believe it's a really great show. Yeah, you range. can't believe some of the stuff that he's able to do. There's going to be a VIP cocktail party, and these. Uh, th- the neat thing about this is that you're taking these all over the place. So I think you're 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 looking at other markets as well. Chicago, I know you guys have talked about and maybe even Dallas. And what's what's really fun is you're getting these local celebrities. So you're getting this local flavor, and then you're coming in, which is, I don't know what kind of flavor. What kind of flavor are you? 
not sure if I'm a flavor at all. You know, um, it'd be uh, it'd probably poison. I would say it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh but uh, but we got. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to meeting John Ham. I've met Ozzy, um, and I think I met Chris Pronger uh, uh, a long time ago. And uh, I think when, Brett Hall's uh, going to be in the mix as well. I think Brett's oh, going to be in right. there. Yep. Holly, of course, of course. How could I forget Holly? Yeah, you, you can't um, forget Holly. He'll be there. No, no. I remember the first time that I met Holly was at Old Warson, and. Uh, we came in from playing a tournament and there was a big pro-am, Hale Irwin was running. And uh, we got in, we flew in on a private plane, a bunch of us, and uh, got to the hotel about midnight. And Holly was lying, uh, lying in wait for me at the bar. Um, and uh, he said, we're going out. Now, it was the first time that I met him. And I said, well, I've just arrived. You know, I've got to get some sleep. No, he said, you don't need that. We went out and I promise you, I promise you, he probably had half a bottle of vodka in him by the time he met me. And there was another half, at least, involved. And we got in about four that morning. And uh, the following morning, he shows up whistling, just as, you know, uh, if he'd just been for a run and uh, a shower and, you know, feeling great. I, I was hungover. I threw up <laughs> on the first tee. I mean, he could have carried me around the golf course. He could have carried me around the golf course. That was my introduction to Holly. What a what a monster of a man. He's just a he's an amazing character. He and he loves the game more than you and I put together. I mean, he is a student of it. He's oh, buying us. clubs. Oh my gosh. We are just really looking forward to having you come to town and uh for people to get behind this. So um they can reach out to my website, Jay at jdelsongolf.com and um they can also, um, uh, there'll be also more information coming their way. And what we didn't talk about is the do, the donations that we're, we're raising for charities. There's going to be $50,000 yes. left for local charities. One's going to be PGA Reach, which Ozzy Smith has been so instrumental. And the other one is going to be the St. Louis Blues for Kids. So we've got some hockey players, and, and they do a, a great job for, for children and stuff in this area. You know, of, of all the major sports, uh, I, I found that that hockey, um, th they're the most amazing people. Uh, they're willing to go that extra mile and, uh, you know, provide players for this. And, and the charitable aspect of it is uh, is hugely important uh, to us. We're able to go into these towns and, and raise some money for these uh, amazing charities. You know, I'm just going to wrap it up with this. But one of the things that still blows me away is the amount of money that golf and the PGA tour and the other tours have raised. And I, I just have feel so fortunate. It was a, an afterthought. It's nothing I ever knew about. And then when you get to watch the greats that came before us that kept giving back and the pro-ams they did, David, this game is ridiculous. It is a societal powerhouse when it comes to raising money. Oh, it is. You know, I think the, the PGA tour is close to 3 billion, um, you know, and, and Tiger Woods may be responsible for a billion of that on his own. Uh, you know, the tickets prices or tickets sales went up any time that, you know, he entered a tournament, you know, they had to double the, the police, they had to double the parking, all kinds of, you know, things that they had to do to accommodate just the fact that he was playing. But, uh, you know, the game in general has, has been tremendously generous over the years. And, uh, you know, golfers get a hard time. We, we take up too much space and we're playing for too much money. We're, you know, elite, elitist this, you know, the country club is that. Well, these country clubs are, are filled with, with the most generous people in America. Um, I'm continually astounded, you know, my own foundation that, that you've been so helpful with over the years. We have that fundraiser down in, uh, in San Antonio with George Strait every year. You, you know, we were, uh, you know, we'll raise between one and two million dollars in a day down there just from people, you know, from those country clubs, you know, it, being generous and uh, there's no place in the world like this that this doesn't happen you know uh, anywhere else in the world where this this amount of money is raised for you know such great such great uh, causes no and i mean you look at see what barbara and jack nicholas are doing where they're on this mission to raise a hundred million dollars in the play yellow uh, foundation and uh i've got a a fellow here in st louis jim sowers who's just a remarkable patriot and he's got a 
make sure that the, the, a certain number of uh, service dogs are donated and, and get into the lives of our men and women heroes that need them so desperately. We live, you know, the, the news is filled with nothing but garbage and bad this and this happened and that happened. But, man, just dig a little bit. There's a lot of good stories. Sure are. You know, it, it's a great game, you know, and it's, uh, it's occupied by great people. And somehow you and I snuck in there. I know. Yeah. Don't totally tell honest. anybody. Don't tell anybody. We'll keep we'll keep tricking them. No, so far, so far we've got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> David, thanks so much for joining me, buddy. All right, Pearl, I'm gonna give you one shot. The Faraday interview was fun. Really good. I'm gonna give you one shot before we break. I just like the way again that he handled what I thought were tough questions about what do you think about Saudi money? What do you think about these guys jumping for money? And I thought his, his answers were, were just real solid, real solid. You know what you get with Faraday. It's yeah. authentic. You may not like it, but put your seatbelt on because it's coming right at you. Folks, we will be back with the 19th hole. This is Golf with Jay Delson. Folks, are you in the market for some additional protection for your ride? You need to call my friends at Vehicle Assurance. Their number is 866-341-9255. Sherry Fain is the owner and president, and she and her team are committed to helping you with your unexpected auto repair bills. They are committed to finding the right protection for you, your budget, and your family. They only work with the top vehicle service providers in the country. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. That's Vehicle Assurance, 866-341-9255 for a free quote, 866 866- 341-9255. How would you like access to 90 holes of golf? Well, that's what happens when you join at Whitmore Country Club. You get access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardine, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. And guess what? No cart fees included in that deal. There's no food and beverage minimums. There's no assessments. They have a 24-hour fitness center, two large pool complexes, three tennis courts. Year-round social calendar includes holiday parties, picnics, date nights, live music. They even have a kids club for your children and much, much more. There's junior golf, junior tennis, and swim teams available. This is a family-friendly atmosphere, and they have a wonderful staff. If you get out there, you got to poke your head in the golf shop and say hello to my friend Bummer. He is a terrific guy, and he will help you with your game and show you around. And don't forget, there are golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, and couples events available all year round. Visit WhitmoreGolf.com. That's WhitmoreGolf.com. After my knee replacement, I was able to swing the golf club again without any pain. SSM Health Physical Therapy guided me through the rehab process, and when I was ready, one of their specially trained KVEST certified physical therapists put me on the 3D motion capture system. It was awesome. They evaluated my posture, alignment, and the efficiencies of my swing. They gave me golf-specific exercises to help make my swing more efficient and repeatable. Call 800-518-1626. Tell them Jay sent you for special pricing. Your therapy, our passion. I've been looking for over three years for the perfect place to be the official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show, and the search is over. Please welcome the loading dock to the show. What a great place it is. It is located at the confluence of the Mississippi and Illinois rivers in beautiful Grafton, Illinois. Their patio is killer with seating for over 800. And every weekend, the loading dock has the area's best live music. There's no reservations required. They have overnight lodging available. And they also have an ice skating rink in the winter months. And don't forget about the super cool Riverside Flea Market, which happens the fourth weekend of each month from April through October. If you're into antiques and collectibles, you got to check it out. The Grafton Ferry runs directly from St. Charles County to within steps of our parking lot. Go check out the loading dock and say hello to my buddy, Peter Allen. He is a great guy, good golfer, and a lover of the game. Call 618-556-7951 or visit them on the web at graftonloadingdock.com. For more information on their live music schedule, the Riverside Flea Market, and more. The Loading Dock, the new official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. Hey, thanks for staying with us. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, and we are headed into my favorite part of the day, the 19th hole, and it is brought to you by the Loading Dock in beautiful Grafton, Illinois. They're right at the Mississippi and Illinois rivers, 
You can check them out, 618-556-7951, or visit them at the web at graftedloadingdoc.com. Guys, this place is pure up there. you got to check it out. Pearl, go ahead and open one. There you go. Pearlie's got one open. All right, so Faraday, he kind of sounded a little bit beat up from the road and, and a little tired. I know that he uh, he was down at his farm, and, and uh, but I really appreciate him jumping on. His candor is always appreciated. One of the things that stuck out in my mind about that interview, John, in terms of his comments were, this is a good thing because since when have we ever had too much money involved in golf? And I thought it's interesting because off the air, he said to me, you know what you and I played for. We played for peanuts. We barely could support our family with what we made. And he's right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I the, the, the holier-than-thou approach that some people are taking for this thing I think is a tough, tough pill to swallow after we learn more and more about it. I like that he said it's going to help the game overall. It's more money in the game. It's more there was more interest in the game. He just took a very pragmatic approach to it, and I, I just really liked the way that he, he did that. I'm a little bit with him, too. I think that there's a way back for all these guys to get back together. I think this is just a blip. They've got to get this figured out, although I definitely think it can take some time, courts and that kind of garbage, which – that's the part I don't like to see golf being muddled and all of that. Well, one of the things I said to him, I, I said, I think these PGA Tour players think that they're just going to be, when this thing gets figured out or live goes away, which I don't know if that's ever going to happen, that they're going to just be able to repair this with the PGA Tour and we'll roll back in. I know that that's the PGA Tour player's mentality, and I don't know if that's the case, John. Well, none of us know know that stuff for sure, but I also like the conver- some of the conversation with how the tournaments are run. Shotgun starts, 48 guys. None of that makes any sense to me whatsoever. How are you going to, you know, I, even David was kind of chuckling. How do you really, how do you announce a golf tournament like that? You know, you, you don't know what putt matters for who. I don't know how you would do a telecast of that. So much of it makes no sense. Now, again, what I also liked what David said was, Hey, a lot of this is, is experimental. It, they're going to make adjustments as they go. Well, I agree with that. I think they're going to have to make a boatload of, of adjustments to make any of this make sense. We're wrapping up another show. Pearl, thanks so much for being with me. Glad to be here, Jay. Looking forward to uh, this this Sunday finale and next week, the Open. The Open Championship and Tiger Woods and St. Andrews. That is really, really going to be fun. That's going to wrap up another show. This is Golf with Jay Delson. Hit him straight, St. Louis. This has been Golf with Jay Delsing. To learn more about Jay and the services he can provide any golfer, visit jdelsinggolf.com. You'll see the latest in golf equipment, get tips from a PGA pro, and you'll learn more about the game of golf. That's jdelsinggolf.com. Hey, do you like wine? Have you heard about the hottest new wine bar in St. Louis? It's called Wild Crush Wine Bar, and it's located in town and country on Clayton Road, just behind the Straps. Have you ever experienced self-dispensing wine machines? Well, they are here. The only place in St. Louis and most of Missouri that you'll find them, and it's at Wild Crush. You can choose your size of pour, and Wild Crush will pour the freshest wine in the area for you. The organic argon gas system used at Wild Crush keeps this wine pristinely fresh for up to 60 days. So if you're tired of drinking wine that's been open for a few days, come into Wild Crush for the best and freshest wine selection in the area. Go to Wild Crush stl.com and come have one with us hey this is jay delsing for ssm health physical therapy our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the pga tour use ssm health physical therapy has the titleist performance institute trained physical therapists that can perform the tpi screening on you as well as use a KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at ssmphysicaltherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. 
boy, is this housing market tight right now. Are you tired of having the second best bid on your dream home? Call my friend Joe Schieser at 314-628-2015. Joe's been helping my family and I for over 30 years. He closes millions of dollars of business every year, and he will help you understand the importance of a pre-approval letter, inspections, and pricing your home or your offer just right. If you need to buy or sell your home, Joe is your guy. 314-628-2015. That's 314-628-2015. We're creating a better future one swing at a time. The Ascension Charity Classic returns September 6th through the 11th and provides critical dollars for area charities. Once again, St. Louis will host golf's greatest champions. Tickets at ascensioncharityclassic.com.